Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Wall plugin and actually today we're going to uh, feature the Medique Foundation plugin as well. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, not only the wall plugin here uh, and garage doors, um, that's mostly what I'm wanting to focus on, but also how to integrate those garage doors with a foundation. So first off I'm going to go ahead and use the standard little grid tool here and just throw me down a grid so I have something to draw against makes things a little easier to lay things out and I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead with a uh, stem wall foundation with a slab so we can do some block outs so first of all we'll just go ahead and draw us a 24 by 32 detached garage uh, foundation so real quickly here we'll lay that out uh, let's see 32 and back over to here and you can see you just, um, with uh, with the polyline tool, it's really nice. You get there and then you just hit enter and there's your foundation. Um, and of course I could change it up to a deeper one or not, but I'll just leave it the default values for now. Okay, <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to actually do two garage doors, two nine foot garage doors on the front of this uh, building with a, um, uh <clears throat> with arches of course. And then I'll, I'll, what I want to do is basically just have two feet between them. So if I'm correct here, that'll put me right there. And uh, I don't even need to draw these guidelines really, but I'm just doing this just to show you kind of what I'm what I want to lay out here. Uh, I think that's let's see, so if I draw from here, go over nine feet, that puts me right there, and then yeah. I'm not even sure if that's right, but let's find out here. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, I'm just trying to lay this out so you can kind of see what I'm getting at. So, I, I kind of want my garage doors like that. And so, let's go ahead and first of all block out um, these openings. And to do that, we have the block out tool down here. Click that and block out width. Uh, let's see what is 9 feet. That's 108 inches. And we'll block this depth out. Yeah, 12 inches is probably fine. Um, so we just go ahead and get our mouse here. And um, so actually it's going to be right there, which is uh, 6 foot. Let's see here. i do that again so I get the mouse to grab. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, there's our first block out. And then we just go over here. And do the same thing. Okay, so we have our block outs. I'm going to go ahead and just delete um, these guidelines since we have them already. That works for our purposes. Okay, <coughs> and um, yeah, the rebar and everything is taken care of, of course, as usual. If you hide the, uh, um, you can see how it's it's trimmed out that rebar. Okay, so let's go ahead now and put a slab in place. I'm going to just go hide hide this uh, grid for a second, just so it's not cluttering up the view. And usually what I like to do with the slab um, is I'll just use a regular slab, not a uh, not a thickened edge one. And I'll go polygon. And I guess you could use a face, but it's just as easy, I think, just to right now. Um, we'll just trace around this opening. Notice how I'm the slab extends into the garage door openings. Okay. I'm just picking my points carefully here so we get everything like we want it. I don't have to go back and do it again. And here we go. Okay. And just bring it back to the start. And notice too, um, with, uh, where it starts, there's a little construction point created there. Um, and I do that so that it helps you, if you don't have something to reference against, you can reference against that construction point. It's just a temporary construction point though. And let's just go 3 inch bar, 24 on center. Okay, so there's our slab. Now all I typically do is I'll just take this thing and move it. Drop it down into place. So let's drop it down 8 inches. And now we have our slab sitting on our or inside of our garage stem wall. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the foundation. Um, fairly simple. Now let's go ahead and throw up the walls real quick. So just go regular walls here. I'm not going to change anything, just leave it as default, 2x6 studs, wrap it all the way around, 
and just drop it right on the corners of the foundation and as you can see it's pretty straightforward okay and right there and the space bar jumps us out okay um, so there you go um, and we can see we obviously are going to need to drop these uh, doors down into that uh, block out but let's go ahead now with the garage doors and that's mostly what I wanted to get at today is the new uh, garage door features so by default of course it loads up the rectangular garage door and um, let's just go ahead and do that first and then you can see we can edit it really quickly and easily so let's uh, change our garage door width though uh, let's see where are we at 120 inches let's change that to 108 inches update on that and then and as you can see I can just uh, re basically reference off of these uh, openings the slab right here to line that up nicely so I don't even need the grid right now I just can go like that and like that and you notice I didn't turn on um, the uh, all the opening or the garage door itself etc we're gonna do that right now though so what we'll do is I'll go ahead and you could do that at the when you draw it or you can do it when you, you can come back here and edit click this edit opening button click one of these garage doors um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and turn on the advanced store options which gives us all this other stuff of course and hit update and now you can see you know it draws the garage door it draws the uh, casing it draws the trim it draws all that okay so now what we need to do is we need to drop this down by eight inches and the nice thing with this edit menu of course is you can just get in here and just start tweaking things and you can kind of watch you know real time kind of what's what it's going to do to your uh, your your model here so let's see we want to vertically offset so this is the one that's important the door vertical offset um, these ones are offsets for rough opening uh, adjustments but typically I leave those at zero I mean you can play with those but this is the one that drops the garage door or actually can bump it up um, into the opening so let's drop this down eight inches and you can see that that dropped exactly where we need it um, and then let's go ahead and change this to an arch okay now right there I, I <coughs> and actually just to demonstrate I'm gonna show you what a Dutch corner does as well um, very similar let's turn on the hardware for that garage door let's put a handle on it maybe right there okay so the little extra parameter for uh, Dutch corners here of course is this one you can change that up to whatever it cuts it at a 45 um, and then the arch when you do the arch you'll notice you have the door arch radius and that looks like that and I'm going to change that to maybe a little less arched maybe 144 mm. so let's try 160 just see how that looks got like that a little better okay and of course you can always change this uh, header piece of trim to match the jam trims or leave it as it is it doesn't really matter but let's just try that header width on that trim see now that matches the uh, trim around the uh, uh, the jam there but I don't know I, I like it actually well, that a little better so okay so the main thing I guess I wanted to demonstrate here with the garage doors now is basically you've got three different options you've got a rectangular you've got an arch and you've got the Dutch corner option now so it gives you a little more flexibility with garage doors and and of course the other thing of course is the uh, ability to drop these down into the foundation um, so there's that one uh, let's go back and edit this one real quick just to get it up to speed with the other one match it and just turn that on hit update uh, you know you could do this all in one step I'm just doing it one step at a time so you can kind of see the transition from one to the other I'm going to drop this down eight inches all right and oh we wanted to match the arch yeah the curvature of that arch uh, I think it was 160 and and notice this arch leg that shows you it basically gives you the the distance from the bottom of the door up to this corner uh, where the arch meets the jam um, and that distance is actually the rough opening uh, distance if you were to measure it not the uh, not the actual trim or anything so just so you're aware of that and then let's go ahead and turn on some door hardware just so it looks good okay I think they matched up now 
All right. Um, so there you go. There's a couple garage doors, arched garage doors, and you notice with arched garage doors that the uh, you know, the door itself uh, is just a regular door. Um, but what happens is, is the opening changes. And just to inspect that, we'll open these doors. And you can see that you know, that's that's what's happening behind there. Sorry, it's hard to zoom up, zoom up on this real well. Um, yeah. <coughs> so, close this back up. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to demonstrate with this, uh, kind of with garage doors or doors in general and foundations is, is, you know, sometimes, let's turn on our grid here again. Sometimes there's a situation where you have drawn, you know, kind of what you want. And now you're like, well, you know, we need to put another door in there. And in this case, um, because we are putting another door in there, um, we, you know, we're going to have to block down again. So let's say we decide to put a man door in and maybe four feet off the side of this building here. Let's drop that in there. And by the way, I have the uh, all the framing callouts turned on right now. You don't have to do that, but I just have them on because I was testing that earlier. Um, but it just gives you a lot more information. So yeah, so this door, you know, I mean, I guess a guy could do it like that. But in this case, we want to bring it down to the grade level. And so we're going to have to block that down. So again, let's just edit this door. Let's turn on all of our options. Hit update. Okay, so now we want to drop it down uh, eight inches to get it with the same on the same plane as the other two garage doors here. And there we go. Okay, so now we can see. Yeah, the foundation obviously has um, it's it's in the way. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I am going to go down here. Actually, I'm move my layers here, my tags. Um, <clears throat> get them so I can see them all. Let's turn off the doors for a second, and let's turn off that trim layer as well. Okay, so we can kind of see what we got going on. Now, if you were to measure this rough opening, you're going to see that it's 38 inches. Um, it's a 36 inch door, but it's yeah, it's three foot two inches because of the uh, rough opening clearances. <clears throat> and you know, sometimes when you block out an opening like this, you might end up blocking it out extra. I mean, I've seen where you people will put like a pressure treated um, you know two by six in, embedded into the concrete on both sides so actually their rough opening is a little different but we're just going to keep it simple and, and do a 38 inch uh, uh, rough opening for this door so let's go ahead and do that um, just click that change that to 38 inches Update on that and I think yeah we just what happens so that winds up in a nice door open there so we go ahead, we hit that, boom, we've got our block out. Okay, so now you're saying, well, wait a second here. The slab now should project into this opening, and you are exactly correct. Um, you know, there's one way, another way of doing it where, you know, you just cut this and bring this down to an 8-inch high block out, and so that, you know, that would be work just as well. But in this case, we want to now edit this slab, okay? And typically when I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple little just temporary lines here so we have something to uh, trace against. I'm just going to bring out temporary line, go across here and right there. Okay. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on this slab and I'm going to edit the slab outline. Not the slab assembly, the outline. Okay, and when I do that you're going to see this green polygon, right? And basically, you need to click into that to, to edit it. And this will define or update the outline of the slab itself. So if you just draw right now, you're going to actually draw. You won't be drawing inside of this. Uh, you have to click into this. OK, so now we're into it. And now I'm going to, I guess I should hit the casing, but that's all right. I'm drawing. OK, I'm basically, I'm just adding to this face, basically. That's what's happening. And then I'm going to get rid of this extraneous line here that's um, in the way. And you know what? I should turn off this casing just so I don't have it in the way. So you can see everything. So what I've done is I've essentially drawn three extra lines to create this bump out here. And then I'm just going to delete this line so we have all one face. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So now all I do, after I do that, I just hit update. 
give it a second and there you go there's it just regenerated that that slab with that new addition that we added okay so we've essentially redefined the outline for the slab all right so everything looks good let's turn on our casing again we turn everything back on so we're kind of there and you can see that everything is as it should be right <clears throat> so let's go ahead and just add a couple windows here for fun um, let's do 48 inches and typically you know my header heights 80 inches but because I've dropped down uh, you can see if I put it there that's typical like for this window but since I've dropped my doors down 8 inches um, I'm not saying you have to do this but I'm just going to do it to test it I'm going to drop those down uh, 8 inches as well let's see is that right that's, uh, maybe that's too much um, I don't know it doesn't it doesn't really matter I guess uh, but yeah that looks about right okay so let's just let's just drop a couple of these centered up on this uh, actually you know what let's um it undo let's turn on the advanced windows options turn off the shutters I don't want shutters on and then hit update and then let's go try that one more time there we go and we'll just go ahead around the building center that up on that wall 16 feet is where we want it. it centers it up on that wall okay so there's our windows there's our doors and last but not least let's throw a roof on this guy so um, just to make things easier I typically like to turn off the wall cladding and the sheathing so I can see what I've got going on here let's turn off the gypsum too while we're at it and where's our sheathing yes right there sometimes it's hard to find all these layers there's so many of them um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and just put a truss roof on it make it simple Turn that to a 612 pitch. Through options, sure. And of course, all these options you have at your disposal. Let's just leave them um, as default. Okay. And so there you have it. I mean, you've got a roof, you've got everything. Um, I'm going to now turn back on all my layers just so I have my layer showing you what we've got. And kind of our final piece, so we finish this guy out. Of course, we have the soffit and fascia turned off, so I'm going to right edit that guy real quick and come down here to the um, soffit and fascia options. I guess I had these turned off. Let's go ahead and turn those on. And then uh, the gutter option, let's turn our downspouts on, just so we have that on. Okay. And there you go. Um, uh, basically, you've got yourself a uh, detached garage with a couple double doors that are arched, nine foot. And you know, if you if you needed to make those a little higher, you can always go and edit those at any time. Just click that and edit. Um, but that's pretty much it. So primarily, I think the thing to be understand here is that you know, if you do need to have blockouts, you can do that with the foundation plugin, and and you can basically have a slab foundation with a thickened edge, or you can have a stem wall foundation. And then the garage doors, you just adjust them to bring them, drop them down into position. Anyways, I've gone ahead and posted this already, this model online, or actually the one I drew before. Um, so you can take a look at it, spin it around, uh, play with it. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. And once again, thank you everyone for your support. And I will talk to you again. Thank you.